You will also need to work on mammalian cells in your lab exercise. So let's talk about mammalian cell cultures, different strategies, how you, different types of cultures and different strategies you use to uh, culture mammalian cells. So first of all, why do we need to culture cells? There are several reasons. One of them is clinical. Other is, of course, for usage in science and research. In vitro, cultivation of cells from different tissues is basically referred to as the cell culture. Vertebrate, for example, can have more than 100 different cell types. Each cell type generally requires specific culturing conditions. So as we were talking about why we need to culture cells in vitro, because one of the things, beauty about culturing cells is that you can manipulate the environment of the cells. So you can see how different cells will behave in a specific environment. You can change pH, you can add different reagents, you can add different signaling molecules that we have talked about in theory and see how cells respond to them. So clinically, when you're using cell culturing, it is very important. People use it for clinical usages, for example, fertility treatment. You know about test tube babies, quote unquote, uh, how they're made. That is done through cell culturing, of course. Chromosomal studies, when we want to look at chromosomes of a person, for whatever reason, we need to culture cells. And when we culture cells, we have to get them at a division phase, uh, for example, metaphase, where the chromosomes are maximally condensed. So we can look at chromosomal abrasions. So we need to culture white blood cells, for example, or um, amniotic cells to look at the uh, chromosomes. We have talked about tissue engineering and also organ engineering. If you need to do those things, you also need to culture cells. Additionally, people use cell cultures to test out new drugs, for example. If there's a drug and they want to do study to determine, to ascertain toxicity of that new drug, for example. Of course, uh, traditionally, people can do that on different animals, rats or mice or rabbits, for example. But these animals are not human beings. Human tissue can has the potential to respond differently to a particular agent than the, these animals. So we can expose human cells to these different drugs, which we want to test, for example. In research, as I've mentioned, to study cell structure and function, we need to culture cells. Also study behavior of the cells, how, uh, and also look at the, uh, study the developmental stages and responses of cells to different stimuli generating monoclonal antibodies. Uh, we didn't talk about that when we were talking about immunology. It's a different subject. However, I'm sure you have come across the term monoclonal antibody. So you need to culture cells to generate these antibodies, and they play a very important role for different types of diseases. Generation of recombinant proteins. For example, we have talked about how we can ligate to different pieces of DNA and once that DNA is introduced into a cells, the cells start producing a protein corresponding to that particular DNA. In order to do that, we still need to do cell culturing. If we want to study viruses, for example, we know viruses cannot exist independently. They have to live inside the host cells, which you won't be able to generate host cells unless you do cell culturing, for example. So now let's talk about types of cell cultures. The primary cells are cells straight from the tissue. Those are the, the primary cultures. There's no passage. Passage basically is a, a technique that once you have grown cells, we will talk about passages in more detail later on. But anyways, for now, I would just like to mention passage is when you're growing cells in a container and the container gets full. So you remove these cells and you split these cells into, for example, two or four groups and you can put them in a new container. So that is basically passaging. Primary cell culture may compose of mixture of cells. So if you're taking a tissue from a, an organism, it can have different types of tissues. Fibroblasts can be present pretty much in most of the tissues. Cell lines have at least one passage. If you will most likely be dealing with cell lines in your lab. With each subsequent subculture, there are several means of obtaining immortalized cell lines. There are different type of cell lines that can, uh, the cells from these cell lines can grow, uh, divide and multiply indefinitely. Because you've talked about cancer cells when we were talking about oncogenes or neoplastic transformations. 
uh, cells have a clock in them they can count the number of times they have divided generally most cells divide about 50 times and after that they are not capable of dividing or they cannot function normally so however cancer cells or tumor cells they can uh, divide indefinitely so those are the immortalized cell lines that people use in their lab for different purposes pure cultures are basically cultures of cells that have a single cell type so how do we obtain pure cultures there are different ways one of the ways you is that you use reagents that will promote the growth of the specific cell type that you are interested in and it will prevent other cells from growing uh, you can also uh, use different techniques for example we'll talk about uh, it later on magnetic sorting cell sorting i'll tell you about that technique later on but you can use different techniques to separate cells uh, a specific type of cells grossly we can divide cell cultures into two groups adherent cell culture or suspension cell culture adherent cell culture is appropriate for most cell types including primary cultures suspension cultures these are the cells that do not stick to a substrate or the bottom of the dish they stay suspended in the media these are generally the cells uh, we culture through suspension cell culture method it are the blood cells or the bone marrow cells adherent cells require periodic passaging but allows easy visualization and inspection under an inverted microscope the suspension cells of course uh, you have to passage them also but the way you passage them is slightly different than the passaging of uh, adherent cells and also since they are suspended it will be hard to observe these cells uh, under an inverted microscope adherent cells have to be dissociated enzymatically or mechanically we will talk about that later uh, however suspension cells they are generally since that these type of cells that they don't stick to each other or they don't stick to the extracellular matrix uh, molecules so you don't have to dissociate them enzymatically or mechanically uh, because they're already uh, single cells explant cultures a piece of a tissue is placed in an appropriately coated dish which contains the media cells typically move out of the tissue and start to proliferate in the dish this is useful for sensitive tissue which may be prone to damage by protease or enzymes that you need to make tissue fall apart so cells will separate from each other and they will adhere to the culture dish also in case of neuronal tissue explants provide an excellent opportunity to the scientists to have a dense area of axons with a uniform polarity uh, polarity of their microtubules for example so this dense area if someone is interested in studying axons they'll place a piece of neuronal tissue cell body mass for example cbm or if it is a neuronal tissue the cells will extend axons out if it is a non-neuronal tissue cells will generally crawl out of the explant and they will start covering the dish so let's talk about the dissociated cultures tissue sample is dissociated either mechanically uh, through trituration or enzymatically uh, generally a combination of both producing a cell suspension so what is trituration you take a glass pipette uh, you flame it so when you flame uh, the glass pipette the pore or the hole of the pipette becomes smaller here for example we are flaming the tip of the pipette it was one millimeter approximately initially after flaming it became approximately 0.2 millimeter so when you titrate a tissue basically when you apply negative pressure the sample will go inside this pipette and then you blast it out you do it several times till the tissue dissociates this is how you mechanically dissociate tissues for example to obtain individual cells cells are plated on coated dishes culture dishes and of course these cells will settle down and they will start to divide next day you have to come in or of course change the media that will do two things first of all the cells will get fresh nutrients and also when you change the media dead cells and any toxic materials that were released by these cells when they were dying uh, they will also be removed when we change the media of these cells so we have seen some techniques of, of, of culturing mammalian cells we will continue our discussion with this topic